All right, so we're going to get started. Um, so thanks everyone for joining us today for the NBA webinar. We're really excited to kick off our summer series webinars with this topic. Uh, my name is Quentin Eden. I'm one of the account managers here at NewComp. Um, so I'll just start off with some quick introductions, and I'm going to pass it off to my colleague Roshan, who's one of our data engineers, and he's going to be walking us through a pretty cool case study in Altrix demo. Um, so just a little housekeeping before we get started. I wanted to mention that the session is in listen-only mode. So if you have any questions, you can type them into the uh, questions box, and we have one of our Altrix consultants actually just standing by to answer any questions as they come through. Um, so feel free to do that. And then if there's anything that needs uh, further explanation, we'll try to keep a little time at the end in order to um, answer those. Um, also, for those of you wondering, we'll record the session, send out the um, slides and recording. And I believe we're also going to have the Altrix workflow on our website. But if you want to just let us know, and we can send the Altrix workflow and data out to you. Um, so for the agenda today, I'm just going to give a five-minute overview of NewComp for those of you who don't know us, and then I'll pass it over to Roshan to explain the case study and go through the demonstration. Um, so as an introduction to NewComp, we've been around for over 25 years, and that whole time we've been solely focused on analytics. So we partnered with Altrix about two years ago when they were really just starting to get into the Canadian marketplace, and it's been amazing to see the growth over the past couple of years and how much our clients and our internal consultants have just come to love Altrix. I think the thing that we really love about it is just how versatile it is. We have clients using it as an enterprise ETL tool to feed their data stores while others are just using it as a data prep tool before their BI tool. You know, we have people taking on awesome data science projects with it, automating the is huge Excel processes, and the theme is always just huge amounts of time saved and that time actually being able to use for analysis, which is always great to hear. Uh, the other great thing about Altrix, for those of you who don't know it, is it doesn't have to be a data scientist using it since everything's drag and drop, but data scientists can bring in their own code to the workflow. Uh, DBAs can use it. They can bring in their own SQL. Um, so you can bring everything into the workflow, and it's as simple or complex as you want it to be. Um, so we really focus on five pillars of analytics. So we consider those to be BI and data visualization. So everything from your standardized pixel-perfect reporting to uh, you know, real data visualization, data exploration, um, information management, so everything from ELT, ETL processes, building data warehouses, data lakes, um, developing data governance procedures, all those sorts of things. We also have planning, budgeting, and forecasting, so really finding ways to automate and centralize any sort of planning processes. Um, predictive and advanced analytics, which we'll get into today and show an example of in the webinar, and then open source and data science. So for each of these areas, we do strategic consulting and roadmaps, software licensing, we're partnered with various vendors, training, consulting, and mentoring. And our job, really, as an Altrix partner is to make sure that you're successful with Altrix through enablement, so things like mentoring, formal training, consulting, and also having someone to help you out when you're thinking about how do you integrate Altrix with the rest of your analytics ecosystem and figuring out what the best way to do that is. So that's a little uh, overview of NewComp. And with that said, I will pass it over to Roshan. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Quentin. So as Quentin mentioned, my name is Roshan. I'm a data engineer here at NewComp Analytics. Uh, before I dive into our MBA case study today, there's a couple things I'd like to review. I review uh, these principles with all my clients uh, before we dive into work. Firstly, uh, trust but verify. Uh, we're going to explore some pretty uh, advanced models, uh, some predictive models during our time today. Just a friendly reminder that these models are not meant to be a one-stop shop. Uh, I certainly don't want you folks to uh, come across information online or some faulty data. I really, really want us to think critically and analytically about the models that we use. Uh, also, to find expertise. Um, try not to trust uh, too, much in, too much free information online. Um, I definitely encourage all of you and uh, definitely encourage all of our clients at you come to definitely uh, uh, take the time to come to uh, principled, well-reasoned arguments about the business questions that we try and solve uh, 
together. Uh, I'm certainly uh, not an AI expert, I've, I but I uh, definitely have uh, the expertise to introduce these models, but I certainly encourage you to find the, uh, find the experts that you folks need in, you, in your industries. And thirdly, just to ask uh, questions. Uh, I certainly want to be challenged. I want my work, my model to be challenged. Uh, I understand we're in a pretty interesting uh, format right now, but hey, uh, feel free to put some uh, questions in the chat. Feel free to send me an email. Uh, I would love to learn more about you and your work and why you would have undergone this work a little, uh, maybe uh, a little bit differently than I did. So uh, I'm in school right now, and I very much think of information in terms of a case study. So here's our case study for us today. You are Anjali, a senior business analyst for the Toronto Raptors. You and your colleagues are thrilled after beating the Warriors to become the NBA champions here. Your boss is Jane. She wants you to keep the momentum going. She wants to hire some new players and has provided you with a big data set. It is your job to clean the data, to extrapolate some insight, and visualize your understandings for Jane. What do you do? This is our case study we will be going through together today. I'm just going to minimize this PowerPoint on my screen. I've got three different data sets on my desktop that we'd like to go through. I'm just going to pull them all up in Excel just so we can get a feel for the information that we're going to be looking at today. Firstly, this Excel doc is called NBA Stats. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Here we can see different NBA players. Uh, this data was taken in 2017. Here we can see some NBA players. We can see their rank in the league at that time, the team that they were a part of, their position, their age, and some other pretty conventional NBA metrics here. Um, there's some that I think we all might recognize, things like three-point percentage, free throw percentage, symmetric like that. There are also some really interesting metrics here that are specific to the NBA. These are metrics that don't mean a whole lot to other industries, just NBA players. Things like player impact assessment, I encourage you all to do a Google search afterwards. It's this custom algorithm that the NBA uses to just get a holistic uh, evaluation of all of their players. So that's our first document, NBA stats. Our second one, eventually, we're going to be bringing in some salary data. Um, this is really, it's really just because of me and my interest. Uh, I'm kind of fascinated with how much uh, these folks make. Uh, this is actual salary data here in uh, USD. Uh, some of my colleagues and I had to take a second to just look at this and kind of process this for ourselves. Uh, but again, we have player, their team, and how much money they made in 2017. And then our last Excel doc is actually Twitter data, which again, I really just thought was interesting. We have the same players here. And in this column, we have how many tweets they favored in 2017. Uh, also, how, may, how much they retweeted in 2017. Uh, for those folks in the audience who are not Twitter users, uh, totally fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's probably for the best, actually. Um, let me see if I can come up with an, with an analogy. Uh, a favorite on Twitter is essentially the Twitter equivalent of a like on Facebook. And a retweet on Twitter is essentially sharing someone else's tweet. So you like this other person's tweet so much that you are willing to reshare it on your profile verbatim uh, because, you, uh, because you buy into it that much. So those are our three data sets there in Excel. So I'm going to exit those data sets. And I'm going to pull up a copy of Alteryx Designer on my machine. So here we have a copy of Alteryx Designer. Uh, I understand there's lots of folks on the call today who have some experience in Alteryx. That's awesome. Uh, that usually makes our comments and questions at the end of the presentation very interesting. Uh, perhaps I'll just dive into the UI, the user interface, a little bit for the folks who haven't used it as before. Here in this blank canvas view, we have what is called our canvas view. It's where we're going to drag and drop tools into the workflow to be able to undergo our data and see the analysis that's being performed. Up here, we have our palettes. I describe palettes to people as a logical grouping of tools. Our palettes help us find, because of their color, because of their description, how to find the tool that we are looking for. For example, in the join palette, we're going to find different tools that are relevant to joining our data together. Under the join palette, we have join-related tools, like join, like union, like append things like that. 
To our left here, we have our configuration window. It's another way that we're going to interact with our tools to be able to get them to do the analysis that we want them to do. Um, a lot of beginner tools don't require the configuration window that, that too much. But as your analysis gets more advanced, you do more advanced analysis like fuzzy matching, things like that, your configuration window is going to, like, okay, it's going to get a lot more important. Down here, we see our results window. We're going to use that a fair bit. It's how we're going to periodically check in with our data as it's being processed to illustrate to ourselves what changes are being made. And also, this a very handy toolbar here. If you are ever stuck, if you are ever using Alteryx on your own, please do uh, put in an idea in this toolbar. It's super helpful. If you are ever unsure of what tool to use, say you try to join two different data together, and even if you just type in the word join, you're going to get a lot of useful information here. You're going to get some links to the Alteryx community. I, I, again, another thing to Google after this presentation is over. A really interesting way to interact with other people in the Alteryx community. See what code they're writing, see what their workflows look like. You can see, you can already see some posts from the Alteryx community here. Here you can see some help. Um, I just opened up one of those help windows here, and already my, uh, my internet browser opened up some documentation pre written by Alteryx. Uh, I'm a programmer by trade. Uh, most documentation is not this fun to read. But this is actually pretty well written. It's pretty concise and I think fairly easy, fairly manageable for the average business user to dive into. And if you ever want to view an example of a tool, you can click on this example button here. Once you downloaded Alteryx Designer, you've already got all this data here, so don't worry too much about where this is coming from. But you do have some very well documented examples and descriptions about how to use those tools. All right, so I think we're ready to dive in ourselves. So to bring in that data that we viewed in Excel, I'm navigating the, and I'm navigating to in and out uh, palette, and I'm going to use the input data tool. It's pretty much our one-stop shop for inputting data into Alters Design. So. Uh, And then ever you're bringing any kind of data into, in, into Alteryx or just in general. Uh, the way I think about it, there's no point in spending six weeks, six months on, a, on a, an analytical project if your data is not a good, of good quality, if it's not of good, good integrity. What I just did there is on the same internet palette, I drag and drop a browse tool. And I'm going to run the workflow. A browse tool is a great way to inspect the data that you're looking at to see what the call names are, to see what the rows look like, to really make sure that the data is what you envision it as. So here, in our results window, because of that browse tool, Alteryx has given me a sneak peek at what that data is looking like behind the scenes. So again, I can see those players, I can see their rank, and all the other information that I expect to see. So that's awesome. So I'm just going to leave that browse tool there, but you folks can get rid of it when you're doing your own work. So though this data is great, it's interesting, it's certainly not at, at a point where we can do some modeling on it. There's a lot of work to do. Uh, I, have, I had some, some Excel experience, some other analytical experience before my time at UConn. And what drove me crazy was white space, blanks, nulls, just anything that took away from the quality of my, my analysis. So when I start off with any workflow, I lean on the preparation palette very, very heavily. So I'm actually going to start off with dragging and dropping a data cleanse tool. Um, our data cleanse tool does a lot of a lot of work that hopefully your business analyst or your data engineer is not spending too much time on. It is going to help us replace blanks, get rid of zeros, uh, leading and trailing white space, and things like that. So here, uh, Alteryx has uh, Alteryx and the tool recommends that I select all the fields to do a data cleanse. Uh, I'm pretty much fine with everything here. I just really want to. I just really, really want to deal with all these as soon as I can. The only other small configuration I'm going to make is that I'm a bit of a stickler for casing. Uh, casing kind of refers to how our words look. Uh, title case is when it's how we usually spell our names. It, it means that the uh, first letter in the word is uppercase, and then everything else is lowercase. That's kind of my preference, so I'm going to specify title case right there. And I'm going to run our workflow with this run button here. When I click run, the data is going to undergo 
is going to go through the process of the workflow. What's also great in Altrix, I think, is the ability to see where you're at at every stage in the process. Because when you have issues with your, with your analysis, when things go wrong or don't go according to plan, because we know that they will, we can inspect every stage of the process to see what's going on. These two, uh, these two buttons here are a bit of a before and after. We can inspect our data before it undergoes that tool and afterwards. So here you can see afterwards, you can see that some of that white space we dealt with. Uh, we know that our blanks are okay. And we can continue moving forward with our model. So those things are looking better. Um, I'm a bit of a stickler. Um, I'm a bit of a stickler for database principles. Um, I believe that every row should have some kind of unique identifier because, you know, though we could probably not add some kind of record ID for, you know, two, three hundred rows, what happens when we have two million rows? What happens when we have two billion rows? We need some solid way to identify where all of our data is, what's where and who's where. For example, we'll work, when we run this model next year, you know, there might be more than one uh, John Wall. What, what happens to our analysis then? Uh, fortunately, uh, Altrix does have a record ID tool. I'm going to drag and drop it in now. And it allows us to actually just give every row a unique ID. It allows us to stick to those database and data management best practices. Uh, because of our uh, business context, you know, we're looking at MBA data and different MBA players. I'm going to call everyone's, unique, everyone's record ID player ID. I'm fine with this data type. I'm fine with the ID being the first column. And I'm going to run a workflow. And then you can see before and after, and in our after, every player does have a unique ID. We have a solid way to identify all these different NBA players. So we're one step closer to being able to predict those models, to build those models. Now that this data is at a point where I'm feeling better about it, I would like to bring in that salary data. But how do we do that? Um, I'd like to do a join. So I'm going to navigate to my join palette. I'm going to drag and drop a join tool. These tools, the inputs and outputs connect pretty much automatically, but just know that there are more manual configuration uh, configuration options. Here we're, here we're going to have a join. We need to sync up the two different parts of our join together. So I'm going to import that salary data the same way I did with the stats data. The stats data. I'm going to use an input tool. I'm going to navigate to the Excel file where I know it is living. Here we can see MBA salary. I'm going to do a attach a browse tool to the end of it, and just again, just take a look at uh, just take a look at everything. So here we see that uh, we have that same player name, we have that player's team, so everything looks a little bit different. Uh, the uh, full form of the team is definitely a little bit different, and here we have their salary. So everything is looking okay there. It looks like everything is coming up the way we want it to. And then we can join both of those data sets together. So just for the sake of uh, clarity, because this is the my workflow, I'm just going to get rid of that browse tool. But I am going to use that join tool. I'm going to connect the, the stream of data from stats. I'm going to connect the stream of data to salary. So here, we have our join. Uh, we could talk about joins in different uh, database operations for a full hour. Uh, long story short, it means that we want to combine these data sets. So there are different ways to configure your join. For the sake of our analysis, wherever there is a match between the two players and the two different data sets, we want a new data set. We want all of those columns from both of those data sets to combine together to give us a super data set. Uh, for, the more, uh, for the more advanced uh, te technical folks on the call, you can definitely import your custom SQL you can definitely get more manual uh, if that's what you enjoy, if that's what's necessary. So here, we do have the ability to join on player name. Um, there's a lot more that you could do in the join panel. Um, you could rename your columns. You could uh, select the columns that are going to uh, show up as a result of your join. Um, I'm OK with all of these in here for now, the columns from those tables. So I'm going to run that, run that workflow. I'm going to navigate to this J. 
That means the result of our join. It's going to show me every row where there was some kind of match. And then I'm looking here in my results window. I not only see what was in that first data set, but also the second one. I can see those players, their teams again, and also their salaries. So though our data is one step closer to being able to analyze for uh, who are the best players to hire, I do want to bring in that Twitter data. Though it's a bit unconventional, I do want to use Alteryx to see if, that, if the NBA players and the Twitter data can help me understand who excels at being an NBA player and someone that we might hire. So I'm going to import that last data set with the import data tool. I'm going to navigate to where I know it, know it lives. I'm going to right click to add a browse tool and take a quick look at it. It looks like everything is okay. We see display names, we see how many tweets they favorited, and how many tweets they retweeted. I'm going to get rid of that browse tool. And one last time, I'm going to do one more join. Drag and drop that join tool to the output of our, the data we're working on. Join on our Twitter data. I think I'm okay to join on player name one more time. Where player equals player. I definitely want to see the results of that join. So I'm going to add a browse tool to the J and run that workflow. Nice. Okay, so here we have players and their stats. We have their salary and we also have their Twitter data in one super data set. It looks like we are ready to uh, a few more steps and then we can start to build those models. Just like Alteryx is great at helping you understand, is great at giving you this data preview, you can also go behind the scenes. I'm going to use my mouse to go to this metadata button here. For those folks in the audience who haven't thought about metadata a whole lot, that's absolutely fine. Again, long story short, metadata is essentially data about data. So here in this metadata portion of the results window, I can see those column names, but also their data types, their data structures. Here, I can see that most of those columns are a string. Um, that might be fine for some folks in the analysis that they're doing, but I know that our models are going to be mathematical. So I want these data types to be numeric. I want them to be an int or a, or a double. I want them to be something that we can crunch, and something that we can apply some kind of aggregation to. So I'm going to go back to the preparation palette one more time. In the field I'm looking for, called an auto field tool. Again, this is something I used to spend a fair bit of time on uh, kind of manually programming out. Essentially what Alteryx is going to do is it's going to take a look at all of those columns that we just looked at. Alteryx is going to look at some of those values in those columns and make an educated guess about what that data type should actually be. If it sees a lot of numbers in age, well maybe it shouldn't be a string. Maybe it should be some numeric data type. So I'm going to run that workflow. And I'm going to navigate to the output of that auto field tool. And I can see that a lot of those data types were changed. Uh, columns like games played became a byte. Player impact assessment became a double. Um, again, we could talk about those for a, uh, a little while, but perhaps that's for another day. So now that those columns, those uh, columns and data sets are better, um, I don't think I want all of these columns. Um, I don't think a statistical model that has 19 uh, variables coming in would give us any would give us a whole lot of useful information. So I'm going to stay on the preparation palette and bring in my select tool. The select tool, uh, my boss calls it her favorite tool. <laughs> I don't know how many how many folks on the call have a favorite tool. Uh, I believe she likes the uh, basically a couple of different tools in one. We can not only manually change your data type if you weren't super satisfied with what the auto field is declared for you. Um, you can also change the size. You can also rename you know, the names of your columns and select the columns you see moving forward. So I don't want to make a ton of changes. Um, there are a few that I'm going to make. Um, we have player and team coming in multiple times. Um, I like these players. I think they're cool, but I don't feel the need to see them multiple times. Um, I'm also a bit of an freak, so the casing of player bothers me a little bit. I'm going to call it player. Rename it. I'm going to rename team to team in a casing that doesn't make my head hurt. Team, position, and age. 
Also, I see a few different data types that, though Alteryx made an educated decision about, I do want to manually configure for myself. I, from the business context that I've understood, I don't think that 3.0% inch and 3.0% inch should be a string. I want them to be some kind of double, again, so then they can be a part of this mathematical model. So I'm going to manually change those to a, a double. You shouldn't have to do this too much, but I definitely do recommend seeing the work that Alteryx did, again, just so you can just so you can manually configure things if you need. And the output of that select tool, everything is looking the way that I want. We've got all of our data. We've got no repeats of columns. We've got the right data types in our metadata. Uh, things are things are looking good. I think we can progress to uh, configuring those more sophisticated models. The first model I'd like us to build is an association analysis. I recommend doing something like an association analysis before you start building anything more complex. An association analysis is going to help us understand which one of these variables have a relationship with the other variables. I recommend doing this first because kind of like we did that data quality check first, if these variables don't have any statistically significant relationship with each other, it's not worth anyone's time spending another couple of days or weeks on this. So let's just see how everything looks to start. Going back to our business case, we are incredibly interested in which players are performing well. So as fans of the NBA, I think there are a few different metrics we all buy into about what is a successful player. And one of those is definitely salary. So I want a more detailed understanding of salary and what other variables have a relationship with salary. So let's select a, a couple fields to analyze here. I'm really interested in age, uh, two point percentage, free throw percentage, uh, the number of games played. The, that's the uh, number of games a player has played in uh, her career so far. Um, player impact assessment, total wins, um, number of Twitter favorites, and number of Twitter retweets. So let's leave that model there for now. I am going to add a browse tool um, to the output just so after it runs, we can take we can take a more detailed look at it. The second model I'd like us to build together is a predictive model. And that predictive model is this uh, supply model. Um, very long story short, uh, regression splines, it's a model that was discovered at Stanford maybe 20, 30 years ago. And it is meant to capture the statistical nuances that linear regression does not. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a bit more interesting that way. So uh, contrasted to that association analysis, our regression splines model is literally meant to help us find what are the best predictors of something. What other variables are the best predictors of another variable? So we're taking a closer look at salary here, but I think another metric of a great player is also their rank. So maybe we can understand what are the best predictors of rank. So I'm going to select rank as our target field. The other variables I want to see how well they predict rank are age, rate percentage, three point percentage. I also want to look at a few others. I want to look at total number of games played. I want to look at player impact assessment and total wins. And also their Twitter data. Does Twitter data have some kind of meaningful, make some meaningful prediction um, on a on our players uh, players rank? And the last predictive model I want us to run is a decision tree. There are, when one of your analysts talks to you about making some kind of tree, know that there are different kinds of tree analysis. There are classification trees. They are, there are regression trees. Um, and this tree, uh, this tree model that we're going to use, a assisted tree, it's not going to look too interesting, but it is technically incredibly important. It's actually going to codify um, the relationships that, that all of the variables have with our target variable, which is rank. It's something you could actually code out and implement into your own business. So the predictor variables I like to uh, crunch again for rank are age, three-point percentage, three throw percentage, total number of games played, player impact assessment, total wins, and that's where it is. So 
Facebook ads and browse tools. So we can see the results of those reports and talk about them, to about them together. And let's run our, our workflow. That might actually take a minute or two. Okay, so I might have to configure that association analysis a little, little bit differently, but that's okay. I've got a copy of the report that we can always pull up. Here, let's look at our decision tree. So here, again, to us as human people, uh, this doesn't look super interesting. Um, we don't really think in, uh, in terms of this, uh, this formula that Alteryx has crafted for us here. But um, hopefully this leaf summary uh, is illustrative of what you can do in your own organization. Um, this is a report that you could give to your lead developer or your IT, IT manager. And you could have a meaningful conversation about, okay, where is there room to implement this, this logic? How does this logic here, you know, if player impact assessment is greater than this or less than this, how can we in, how can we implement that into how we think about our own work? How we inter, how we invest our money? How we interact with our customers? It's definitely a great place to, to start here. I'm going to take a look at the result of our spline model. Again, some very complex formulas that might not make a total a whole lot of sense to us at first glance, but there is one report I think here is very intuitive, and it's the variable importance plot. So that regression splines model helps us understand what are the biggest predictors of a player's rank. It looks like the biggest predictor that Alters has the most statistical confidence in is that player impact assessment, which I guess isn't too surprising. I guess it bodes well for the NBA that they are quite skilled at coming up with metrics and algorithms that quantify uh, their, their players well. This still is very interesting to me. I'm really interested in how games played seem to be more important, a stronger predictor than total wins. I don't know if anyone in the audience is a fan of uh, Malcolm Gladwell, but I'm a huge fan. Uh, he's a Canadian hero to me. Um, but it seems that the total number of players, of hours a player has logged, seems to be more important than how many times they've won. Um, it seems like uh, racking up more hours on the court does seem to help folks uh, develop some kind of game intelligence uh, that really does inform how they play. And this is also interesting to me because free throw percentage is a more important predictor than, uh, than three-point percentage. Um, this is weird to me as a fan because I observe that players who are really great three-point shooters, uh, players like Steph Curry, they make a lot of money and get a lot of media coverage. But it seems like free throw percentage is more important. I honestly don't know why that is. I'd love to have a conversation offline about this. Perhaps uh, free throws happen more often um, than you will shoot threes, and hence being a free throw, a better free throw shooter will help you get more points than taking more bad threes. I'm not sure. And it also looks like number of Twitter favorites was decently important. Um, I'm not sure well, why that is. Maybe very successful players, high range players, they've got more money to spend on their social media teams to help them help them with this kind of work. I'm not sure. So maybe we'll see if we can uh, configure this uh, this model one more time. If not, it's a huge deal. Uh, very happy to send folks that uh, the report that's uh, run uh, run in uh, in an email offline. You know what? I I uh, I uh, I uh, apologize. Uh, perhaps we'll uh, move on. But essentially, again, the association analysis great to get an initial overview of uh, what factors might be might be might be important as you design the rest of your models. So that knowledge, I think, to me, is really really interesting. So let's see if we can actually use it 
to answer our question for Jane. Let's see if we can actually use that new knowledge that we created to find some players to hire. So we know that we know that free throw percentage was really important, and we know that total number of games played was really important. Let's see if we can codify that out just a little bit. So we are still an all tricks designer, but more uh, more tools to use and less talking for me. So I'm going to navigate to our transform palette. I'm going to drag and drop the summarize tool. And I'm going to connect it to the output of our select. The summarize tool is incredibly useful. Um, folks, our clients who work in finance, they love this tool so much. It just saves them a lot of time. It's a very easy way to do a lot of the functionality you folks probably do in Excel with uh, pivot tables and things like that. So if we want to find players who excel at those metrics, retail percentage and games played, first let's find the average. Let's see where everyone is at then we'll try and find some players who are above that average. So I'm literally just going to use all tricks to take an average of free throw percentage. I'm going to select free throw percentage, select numeric, and then select an average. So that's what that's one of the metrics we're going to get is our result of the summarize tool. I'm going to undergo that same process for a number of games played. I want some kind of average of it. And because the Toronto Raptors were on a bit of a budget, maybe someone is going to be more likely to sign on with us. If they're of a lower rank, they're looking for a hot new team to, uh, to sync up with. Let's, let's get an average of rank. Maybe we'll look for players who are below the average rank. Numeric, average. All right, so let's run our workflow. Okay, and here we can actually see, we can see for all of those players we're looking at, we can see what the average free throw percentage is. We can see what the average amount of games played is, and we can see the average rank. So let's append these, this new information to our original data set, and then we can use a really simple formula to find, tool, to find players that meet this criteria. Uh, these predictive tools take a lot of time to run, there's a lot of R code going on uh, behind the scenes. I'm actually just going to get rid of those for now. Uh, don't worry, they did not go anywhere. I've got lots of reports for you folks uh, to read if you'd like. We will definitely include the reports that those uh, tools produce when we get, in, when we get uh, in touch with you folks afterwards. So we need to append those new averages we found back to our original data set. So in the join palette, I'm going to go to the append tool. And I'm going, and I want to append, not join. Append just basically means just tack everything on to everything. We just want everything to be in one table. We don't care too much about everything else. I'm going to append our two different data sets together and run our workflow. And then here, we have everything we're used to seeing, but also those averages. We can systematically go through every player and see here above if they have a great free throw percentage, have played a ton of games, and are below the average rank. So to end off this portion of, of our analysis, let's just write a simple, a simple filter. For all of our technical folks in the audience, uh, we're basically going to do some programming uh, logic to filter out the rows that we're not interested in. We're just going to write a little bit of logic to find rows that meet or don't meet the new criteria that we've come up with. So I'm interested in free throw percentage. So let's find players who have a higher than average free throw percentage. We're getting there. We do a Boolean N. And let's find players in terms of how many games they've played is also above average. 
average number of games played. And let's find players who have a lower rank. Based on our business context, we know that these are players you're probably looking to get on a, a new team, could probably use some publicity, might come at a lower price tag. And average rank, that is greater. So as you're ranked higher, that number gets bigger. So a rank that is greater than the average rank. And that's run, our workflow. And here, this true, those are all the rows that met our criteria, and the false, the F, all of the rows that didn't. So we're interested in what rows did meet our criteria. So here, this is, this is kind of the answer to our business question. We've got 19 fields here. These are players who meet our new criteria and are players to reach out to. Um, I'm not, I'm not here. Well versed in all of these guys, but I do recognize some of the names. Uh, Terry Rozier, um, I think uh, Danny Green, and Vince Carter. Um, I actually remember Vince Carter playing on the Raptors all of those years back. So this is definitely really, really interesting. So um, yeah, so I think at this point in the your experiment, you would export your data to be visualized. We know that that's something that Jane wanted. Um, we won't go through the, uh, we're running short on time. I won't go through the process of actually exporting to Tableau or Power BI, but I do want you folks to know that those plugins, those drivers are available. They're so easy to find. I definitely reach out. I can definitely send you folks the right link on the Altrix community, the Altrix gallery to find these links. So here it's very easy to export to Tableau workbook. Uh, we help folks with Power BI work all the time as well as Tableau. So here, you definitely got uh, published a Power BI, op uh, Power BI option. So then after you did that, uh, I knew we might be short on time today. So I did make an example dashboard in Tableau. Here is just an example dashboard of how you can visualize your work. How you can visualize to Jane, here's what I found. Um, here's where we might dive in further. So here, I've tried to illustrate how many of uh, the players who have played the most games. Uh, there's just a very simple filter in Tableau that does that. I see Mr. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is there. Uh, he is no longer with uh, Toronto. It makes my heart hurt. Um, I'm so upset about it. But uh, I guess I'll have to deal with that. <laughs> here is the visualization that illustrates some of the relationships that we explore in Altrix. We can see a scatter plot that helps understand the relationship between free throw percentage and number of games played. Uh, at first glance, it does look like free throw percentage gets better the more games you play. Player and their retweet. So the Twitter data was important. It wasn't super important, but um, this still is interesting to me because there seems to be players who retweet a ton and are not ranked too well. Like this gentleman here, I haven't heard of him, uh, Joel E. I uh, seems to like to tweet a whole lot. Uh, maybe he's just bored because he's not getting any court time. I don't know. Um, and roster by team. I just thought this was really interesting. Perhaps another uh, question for another day. But why are teams stacking up their players so differently? Why does Atlanta want to have four power forwards where Cleveland has one? I'm definitely very interested in that. So after we've extrapolated those insights and visualized our understanding, I, at the end of the day, we all work for some kind of business, and we do need to tell our bosses something meaningful. So what would we say to Jane? Well, here's something you could, you could uh, draft for her. Uh, Jane, player impact assessment and total wins were significantly associated with the player's salary. However, total number of games played and free throw percentage were excellent predictors of the player's rank. All reach out to Danny Green, Terry Rozier, and Vince Carter. Let's schedule a meeting to discuss this further. And then hopefully your conversation about uh, these NBA players would uh, carry on from there. I think that is the end of uh, my time. I'm going to pass the mic over to Quentin. Again, my name is Roshan. Uh, so great to uh, chat with you folks today, and I look forward to um, hearing about any questions or concerns you might have. All right. Thanks a lot, Roshan. Um, so we did get a couple questions through the presentation, which um, we did answer, but just a couple of the big ones that were asked were, um, are the data files available to download? So when we send out the recording of the webinar, we can send the data files as well. Um, the specific Altrix workflow uh, 
we might not be able to send it to everyone, but just um, if you're interested in actually getting a copy of that Alteryx workflow, let us know and we'll be able to send that to you no problem. Um, and then there was just another question about um, losing some records when you're doing join, uh, joins, and that does, um, that does tend to happen uh, when you're doing joins, but um, just some of the data wasn't available. Um, and one of the nice things that Alteryx has too for situations like that where you have data coming in from different sets that might be a little bit different, Alteryx actually has really good uh, fuzzy matching tools um, to be able to, you know, where names are just spelled slightly differently. Um, there's, so you're able to, you know, get more of those uh, joins there. Um, so those were the major questions that we had, and if anything else comes up, um, feel free to reach out to Roshan if there's anything uh, more technical that you want to talk about. He's always happy to kind of work with uh, work with clients and you know hop on screen sharing sessions to um, see what you're trying to do and help out. Um, anything more on uh, licensing, training, um, and looking for you know looking for help, just um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, we've also included some of our Alteryx training courses um, in the slides that will be sent out. So we actually developed our own um, Alteryx training courses um, just because our guys were so passionate about it. Um, they actually wanted to create their own training courses. So kind of every aspect of Alteryx that you might be interested in, if you prefer more of a, a formal training, um, you know, there's lots of resources available for Alteryx online, which is great, but some people always prefer uh, the formal training uh, route, so we can always help with that. Um, and then lastly, we just have, uh, we've linked to some boot camps. Um, so, you know, we work in all areas of analytics and there's so many of these new big topics that are popping up that everyone hears about, but nobody really fully understands. So um, we've designed some boot camps that just introduce people to those topics and get them hands on. And a lot of these topics such as, you know, will it blend and data science, we actually use Alteryx in those boot camps to get people introduced to the topic. Um, so with that said, I just want to thank everyone again for taking the time and I uh, hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you.